Salam alaikum. There is this recent phenomenon within the Muslim community where they are getting fatwas from kids on TikTok, which are completely wrong. One of them is about having a house dog as a pet, and it's starting to gain some momentum. So I thought we have to talk about it. Here's how the Quran proves that dogs aren't haram. Muslims all over the world are led to believe that having a dog as a pet is not permissible. However, in the Quran, a dog is mentioned three times, and none of them speak ill about them. The claim is as follows. Number one, there is no evidence that petting a house dog is haram. Number two, there is no evidence that dogs are najas. Number three, dogs are mentioned three times in the Quran. All of them are in a good way. That is in chapters Al-Ma'idah, Al-A'raf, and Al-Kahf. Number four, there was a disagreement between Salaf scholars about the issue of owning dogs. Even Imam Malik himself said that dogs are not najas and they do not nullify your wudu. So why are you making a big deal about owning a dog? I know we shouldn't be wasting our time explaining basics, but because unfortunately these videos are getting a lot of views, I am afraid that some people might be misguided by them. So bring your coffee and let's start. First of all, is there really a disagreement between Salaf scholars, more specifically between the four madhabs regarding owning a dog as a pet? The answer is absolutely not. There is zero disagreement. You are mixing two questions. The first question is, is it halal to own a dog as a pet? And the second question is, are dogs najas? And they are completely different. There is no disagreement regarding owning a dog as a house pet. It is haram. The disagreement is whether it is najas or not. Imam Malik said it is not najas. It does not nullify your wudu. All you have to do is to clean the place where it touched you. While other mazhabs disagree. But this is not the point. The point is all mazhabs, including Imam Malik himself, all self scholars, all modern scholars 100% agree that it is not allowed to pet a house dog. And that has nothing to do with whether it's najas or not. You are only allowed to own security dogs and hunting dogs, full stop. And if you're asking why are they discussing whether it's najas or not, if it's already haram to pet it, simply because of the people who have farms or shepherds or hunters who are allowed to own a dog. If you're not one of those people, the Najas discussion doesn't concern you. Now let's talk about the evidence really quickly. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, مَنْ أَقْتَنَا كَلْبًا إِلَّا كَلْبًا دَارِيًا لِصَيْدٍ أَوْ كَلْبًا مَاشِيًا فَإِنَّهُ يَنْقُصُ مِنْ أَجْرِهِ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ قِيرَاتَيْنِ Whoever owns a house dog, the record of his good deeds decreases by two qirats every day. Except, of course, if it was a security dog or a hunting dog. That is in Sahih al-Bukhari 5481 and in Muslim 1574. This is as authentic as it gets. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, was asked, what is a qirat? He said the qirat is as big as the mountain of Uhud. So imagine Allah removing from the record of your good deeds two mountains every day. Another evidence is that the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, لا تدخل الملائكة بيتا فيه كلب ولا صورة Angels do not enter a house that has a dog in it. Sahih al-Bukhari 33-22 So even if it's a hunting dog, it should stay outside. Common responses to this fatwa are, I love my dog so much, I can't live without it, stuff like that. This statement is exactly like any other I love something haram statement. Like, I can't live without having a girlfriend, or I can't live without eating pork. All I can do is to remind you of this hadith. Whoever leaves something for Allah, Allah will replace it for him with something even better. Most of the time I hear this response from young boys and girls who are mature enough to be fathers and mothers, but due to social reasons or other reasons, they are not able to be or will not able to be soon. Petting this cute dog fills their emotional needs for now, or at least part of it. I would recommend trying to fix the original problem instead of replacing it with another problem. May Allah grant them patience. Also, you can have a cat or a fish or a bird. They are also nice. 
Another common response is, my house dog serves both as a pet dog and a security dog. Therefore, it's okay for me to have it. Mm, here, I usually say, it's between you and Allah. I will not guess your intention, nor it is my business to do so. But let me remind you of the story of the children of Israel when God ordered them not to fish on Saturdays. What they did is they made a work around. They put their nets in water on Friday nights and they took them out from the sea filled with fish on Sunday morning. Technically, they were not fishing on Saturday, but they were. We all know the severe punishment they received. If lawyers find loopholes in man-made laws and find workarounds, that is because of our limitations as humans. In dunya, some people can get away with breaking the law if they are smart enough. But you can't do that with God. It doesn't work. Another common response is, I don't pet dogs personally, but I sell them. According to this hadith that you see on your screen, it is haram to sell dogs. And when Ibn Qudama was asked about selling dogs, he said it is haram. And when Sheikh Ibn Baz was asked about selling dogs, he said, Bay'u al-kilabi bottle, selling dogs is haram. And regarding the fact that dogs are mentioned in the Quran three times, let's read them together one by one. First one is Quran chapter 5, verse 4. The verse is in front of you now. They ask you, O oh Prophet, what is permissible for you to eat? Say, what is good and lawful? Also, what you caught with your hunting animals and birds of prey, which you have trained as instructed by Allah. So eat what they catch for you. This verse talks about what is halal to eat. Specifically, God is teaching us that it is halal to eat what we hunt using trained animals and birds. What animals and birds do people use for hunting? Exactly, dogs and falcons. It is very common for hunters to train dogs and falcons to help them with their hunting. The question is, is this verse talking about hunting dogs or pet dogs? And where does it exactly say that it is permissible to have a dog as a house pet? Nowhere. The next one is in Quran chapter 7 verse 176. فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْكَلْبِ إِن تَحْمَلْ عَلَيْهِ يَلْهَثْ أَوْ تَطْرُقْهُ يَلْهَثْ his example is that of a dog. If you chase it away, it pants. And if you leave it, it still pants. This is the example of the people who deny our signs. This verse talks about how people who decide to reject God for fleeting pleasures, pursue entertainment and worship their desires, their example is like a dog who keeps panting whether you talk to him or not, whether you offer him da'wah or not. He will just ignore you and pant. The question is, does it mention dogs in a good way? I don't think so. And where exactly does it say that it is permissible to have a house dog as a pet? Nowhere. The last one is in Quran chapter 18 verse 18. And you would have thought they were awake, though they were asleep. We turned them over to the right and to the left while their dog stretched his forelegs at the entrance. Had you looked at them, you would have certainly fled away from them filled with horror. The question is, is this verse talking about security dogs or pet dogs? Where exactly does it say that it is permissible to have a house dog? Again, nowhere. So please stop saying dogs are mentioned in the Quran. This is not how it works. If you decide to commit a sin, it's your choice. However, you should know that there is a huge difference between someone committing a sin and someone lying about Allah and his messenger to fabricate an excuse for his sin. Allah said in Quran chapter 18 verse 15, فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِنْ مَنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا There is no one more unjust than the one who fabricate lies about Allah. Also the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, إِنَّ كَذِبًا عَلَيَّ لَيْسَ كَكَذِبٍ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ فَمَنْ كَذِبَ عَلَيَّ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَلْيَتَبَوَّأْ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ Lying about me is not like any other lie. Whoever tells a lie about me deliberately, tell him to prepare for his place in hellfire. So if you decide to sin, any sin, it doesn't matter what it is, do yourself a favor and don't innovate in religion to find an excuse. Admit it's a sin and ask Allah for guidance. Maybe he will guide you later. I hope I answered all of your questions. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, deliver my message, even if all you can deliver is one verse. 
So don't let this video stop with you, share it with your friends. Also help it spread on YouTube by engaging with it with likes and comments. And if you want to watch a complete breakdown on Sharia Law, check out this playlist up there. And if you want to watch more Q&A videos like this one, check out this playlist down there. Thanks and Salaam Alaikum.